Hello, I'm James. Welcome to my channel and to this series, which is all about helping you prepare for your maths GCSE. I did an introduction to this series last week, but this is the first proper one, and it is all to do with your mock exams and how you can make the most of them to make some quick and significant improvements. So let's start with having a look at what you can do immediately using those mocks as a starting point. Well, the first thing is that the mock gives you a brilliant benchmark as to where you are now and exactly how far you have to go to get that grade that you want, right? It's no longer a vague idea of I need to do more work or I've got to get better at maths. Um, you can be pretty precise now. So if you know the particular paper that you did in your mock, then a quick Google will tell you what the grade boundaries were for that paper. And in fact, even if you didn't know what the paper was, it's worth having a bit of a search just to get a feel for what the grade boundaries of a typical paper look like. Bearing in mind, of course, that every paper and every exam board is different. So on the screen, there are the grade boundaries for the Edexcel June 2018 papers. And the mark you can see there is a total mark you need from all three papers. So that's out of 240. And it varies, um, but it's typically between 30 and 35 marks between each grade. So if you got 136 marks and you just scraped a four in a foundation paper, you needed 33 more marks to get a grade five. So an average of 11 per paper. Now, of course, we don't know what the grade boundaries will be for your actual exam, but you've now got a much clearer idea of where you are. And for me, that is the first really good thing about the mocks. So your first job then is to go and have a look at the grade boundaries to get a precise idea of where you are and how far from your target you are. The second great thing about mocks, and in fact, the third thing relates to this as well, is that you now have some really clear indicators of what you can do to improve. And the first of those is that you probably made some silly mistakes, right? It's completely normal, it happens, it still happens to me even. But there's a tendency to look back and be very generous to yourself and think, ah, oh, well, that was just a silly mistake. I probably wouldn't do that in a real exam. But you're not gonna do that because we are all about learning from our mistakes. It can be tough, but it's how you will improve and it's how you'll make sure you don't make those mistakes in the real exam. So your second job is to look back through the paper and make a note of all the topics where you're kicking yourself about a silly mistake. Write them down on the front of the paper or somewhere else, it doesn't really matter where, as long as you can come back to them later and check that you're no longer making those mistakes. And whatever those silly mistakes were from now on, when you're answering questions, just have an idea in the back of your mind to check you're not making those same mistakes. Very often, reading through the question at the end, after you've answered it, can help, or just checking that you've rounded the answer off correctly, that can help as well. Those are both common mistakes that people make. And the final thing today, and I think this is possibly the most powerful, is that you can use the mock to start to get a feel for which are the most sensible topics for you to start working on. I found that people will often fall into the trap of either wanting to keep practicing questions that they can already do, or they'll sometimes do the opposite and they'll want to practice the hardest questions possible. And actually the most sensible thing is to practice the stuff you know, in between those two things. Things that you can do with a little bit of a nudge, not too hard, not too easy. And as you do the paper and as you look back through it, you'll know what those questions are. They're the ones that when someone explains it to you, you think, ah, oh, yeah, of course, that makes sense. I can do that now. So for now, we are ignoring the questions that you got right and that you found easy, and we're ignoring those really hard questions where you think, I have no idea what you're talking about. Now, broadly speaking, the papers get harder as you go through them, and you'll often know that there was this page beyond which I really started to struggle. So that is the area around which you should focus. So your third job then, over the next week or as soon as you've got your mock back, just choose one of those topics that you think hit that sweet spot of being just the right level of difficulty for you and you're going to do a bit of extra work on that so that you feel you've already made a bit of progress with it. Show yourself that you can do this, okay? So the question is then, how can you do that? Well, there are plenty of options out there uh, and my website does it. I'll get onto that in a minute. But another one I would recommend is Maths Genie. That has loads of exam style questions. They've got written solutions and it's arranged by topic and by grades. You can scroll through, just find whatever it is you need to work on and then check your answers or see how to do it using the model answers. Uh, it's all free and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And obviously I want to plug my own website as well. I think it's great for this. 
kids. So if you're on my site, mathskitchen.com, you can go to the topics page and search for whatever it was you wanted help on. Let's say that that was to do with finding the area of shapes. And let's say you've got a question wrong to do with finding the area of a triangle. You could watch a lesson on that and then practice some questions, or you could just go straight to practicing the questions. Alternatively, you could choose key questions up here, and it will give you some very specific questions that guide you through all the necessary skills for finding the area of shapes, and it will help you identify where you're stuck and what you need to work on. Or you can choose to just answer a mix of questions, including some exam style questions. There are lots of other nice features on the site, which I'll get into in coming weeks. But one to be aware of straight away is that if you log into the site, it can track what work you've done so that you can make sure that you work on problem areas or things that you've not yet ticked off. The site is completely free at the moment and it will remain free for anyone that's currently signed up. Um, or that signs up in January of this year, that's 2020. So three things to work on from today's video. One, have a look at the grade boundaries so you have a clearer idea of where you are. Two, make a note of those silly mistakes that you've made. And three, choose a topic that you're gonna work on and then go and practice that. And four, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel or give the video a like. I will be uploading a new video in this series every Tuesday, as well as continuing to upload specific topic videos, probably on Fridays. So thanks for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video.